college football imperialism but this time it's conference versus conference and every single one has three lives i've divided the united states into 12 different groups and yes i made up an fcs conference anyways how this will work is i'll spin a wheel to decide where we start and then after this directional wheel decides where they'll be attacking i'll have to spin two more wheels to see which teams are playing in our example we got the mac attacking west so that puts them up against the big 10 conference now i have to go spin the mac team wheel to see who will be representing the them and it'll be Toledo. Then I'll spin the Big Ten wheel to find out that Nebraska will be defending, and the loser of this game will lose one of their conference's three lives. By the end of the video, we'll know the best conference in college football, and I'm ready to see our first matchup. Well, it turns out that this one wasn't much of a battle at all, as Toledo is gonna get the MAC conference a win. Nebraska only put up three points, and that's gonna cost the Big Ten a third of their land, while also losing one of their three lives. As you can see, anyone could end up winning winning this thing. And next up, we have Conference USA, but there's only a few teams in it. They're going to be stuck playing against the ACC. And since everybody left the conference last year, there's only five teams to pick between. There are more, but they're not in college football revamped, and it looks like NC State will be defending the ACC's land. I'll be honest, I'm rooting for the smaller conferences in this thing. And there's a chance we get another upset, as with a minute and a half remaining, Louisiana Tech has the ball. And since they're only down by six, who knows what is going to happen here. They're already past midfield. Their quarterback's been making amazing reads so far. That that's another one. And on third and inches, he's going to find another open receiver. All the other ACC teams that have to watch from the sidelines are getting nervous. And with 15 seconds left, they're now on the five yard line. Their quarterback's going to take the sack and they're not using their last timeout. I don't even know if they're going to get the snap off. What are they doing? They literally had a timeout. Well, it looks like the ACC lucked out of that. So I'm sorry, Conference USA, but you have to lose a life. They're also going to lose control of the state of Kentucky. And I know the geography isn't perfect, but after taking out the state lines, this is what the map looks like. As these teams continue to lose lives, they'll lose some of their land. And now the Big 12 is up and they're going to be attacking to the West, which technically puts them up against the Mountain West. Now I've updated all of these conferences to what they'll look like next year. So like Cincinnati could play for the Big 12, but I think TCU representing them is much better. Poor Wyoming probably doesn't stand a chance, but it actually turns out that I was mistaken. Their odds are still not great, but with 30 seconds left and no timeouts, they're getting the ball down by seven. They only need to get a touchdown. And I probably shouldn't say only, since that's going to be hard to get. It really is hard to believe that TCU made the national championship this year. That was crazy. But now they're just trying to defend one of the Big 12's lives against the Mountain West Conference, and they're going to do it. The Horn Frogs secure the win, and the map is going to go from looking like this to now looking like this. You also can't forget the lost life. And now that you all have an idea of how this works, let me know who you think's going to win. The Big 10 already lost one of their lives, so this spin is huge. And all I can say is poor Conference USA. They're going to have to hope that this lands on Nebraska or Rutgers, which it does. And I feel crazy saying this, but they might have a chance. Both of these teams are 77 overall, and the Big Ten has gotten very unlucky with their selections so far, but they might be able to escape this one. UTEP is down by four with a minute remaining, representing Conference USA, and their quarterback is going to get them the first down. But for some reason, I just don't see them winning this game. He is slinging it deep, and he finds his receiver though. Never mind, what am I talking about? Rutgers is literally choking as we speak, and that's not gonna go anywhere, but they still have two plays to get into the end zone, and on third and goal, they're only gonna get a few, so it will all come down to this final play. 30 seconds left on the clock. Their quarterback throws it, and it's going to be intercepted. UTEP is going to fall short, and the Big Ten does not lose their second life. Instead, Conference USA is a bit closer to being eliminated, and now all they have left is Tennessee. I do have to say, I am interested to see how the FCS schools compete, and literally, as I was saying that, the wheel landed on them. They're going to be put up against the Mountain West Conference, and I'd say their best chance of winning would be North Dakota State, but it's not going to be them. SEMO is going to be hitting the road, and they're going to be attacking at Boise State, so it's time to see if the Broncos can defend for their conference. This score makes it look like this one was never much of a contest, but that's just not the case. Boise State just ended up running away with it in the end, and the Mountain West Conference as a whole needed that win. They're going to get to take back some land since they recently lost some, and so far no team's been eliminated from the wheel, but I cannot wait to show you all the teams available for independence. The only way they can really go is to the ACC, and because College Football Revamp can't add certain teams, these are the only two 
two independents available to play in this matchup, and it's gonna be the best one. That should be enough to make the ACC sweat. You're either getting Notre Dame or Army, and I feel like you're gonna need some popcorn for this one. With 54 seconds left, the Irish are trying to tie up the game. They have a guy in motion right here. They need to score a touchdown on this play. It's fourth and goal, and that's a dot. There's a very good chance that this one goes to overtime, but Pitt does have a chance, and they're not too far from field goal range. I don't know why they didn't use a timeout there. There's only 23 seconds remaining. They need to snap the ball, but I guess they don't want to win because with three seconds remaining, they still haven't snapped it. They took it down to this final play and we're going to be going to overtime. For how dumb of a decision that was, Notre Dame really deserves to win now. And it looks like we have a third and 13, so Pitt might be in trouble. They're going to get some yards here, but it is still fourth down. It all comes down to this and he is going to apparently get it. The refs ended up not marking him short there. So Pitt has a lifeline and I think we're going to be going into double overtime here. We are. Well, after going back and forth for a bit, the Irish ended up forcing the Panthers into an interception. And since they're in field goal range with this kick, they're going to seal the deal. The other ACC schools cannot be happy with that ending because it's going to cause them to lose a third of their land. And to be honest, the independents have a decent chance of winning this. It's a 50-50 chance for Notre Dame to play every time. But for now, we're going to get to see the SEC debut against the American Conference. And since they ended up losing their best teams to the Big 12, I don't think even UTSA has a chance against any of the big boys, but it's Texas A&M. So all I'm going to say is now I believe in the American Conference. Well, here we are with less than a minute remaining, and guess what? The Aggies are in a close game with UTSA. However, I do have to give them props. They have a seven-point lead. It's not looking good for the Roadrunners, and that interception is going to seal it. The American Conference is going to lose their first life, but they ended up putting up a better fight than we expected. At some point, we're going to end up removing conferences from this wheel, and I think Conference USA is going to be the first to go. They're going to be stuck playing the ACC, and unless they get a really lucky draw, I think they're going to be done for. Now, Boston College isn't known for being the toughest of opponents, but I'm not sure if the Blue Raiders have it in them. With a little over three minutes remaining, it's a 20-point game, and Middle Tennessee State on fourth down is not going to get it, so the ACC is going to finish off Conference USA, but that's just going to make their lives worse because now they're touching the SEC. With one unlucky spin, these two power conferences could be facing off, and I'm going to be rooting for it now because I want all of the chaos. Of course, we get the conference stuck in the middle, the American Conference, and once again, they have to play the SEC. So at this point, they were just doomed from the start. I tried to set up things as best as I could, but with the weird geographies of conferences now, it kind of ended up being a random map. Arkansas is going to be playing East Carolina, and I'm really surprised by this, but clearly the Pirates came to play because they just annihilated the Razorbacks. Now, the SEC is definitely a favorite, so this is a huge result, and a few turns ago, they took this land from the American, but now they've given it right back to them. Well, so far, any conference that would be a favorite is not doing well, and the independents are up again. They're going to be going to the Southwest, which is going to put them against the MAC instead of the ACC. This is the most important spin because whoever is attacking will make a big difference. It's going to be Army, and that's going to make this a much more even matchup against Western Michigan. Neither of these teams are very highly rated, and with a minute 40 remaining, Army does have the edge, but it's third and 17. Western Michigan's going to get the stop, and with a bad punt, they have plenty of time to go down the field get a touchdown, and win the game. All I'm gonna say is if the Broncos can pull this off, the MAC might be an underrated conference, and as I am saying that, they turn the ball over. So the Independents are gonna keep all three of their lives while the MAC loses their first, and the Independents are really starting to expand their territory. If Army can take care of business, even when Notre Dame doesn't get picked, they could end up going a long way, but for now, the Big Ten will be going to the South, and that's gonna put them up against the Big 12. So far, the Big Ten has not been represented by their best teams, and I doubt they'll the spin that they're hoping for. We're going to have Oklahoma State playing against Illinois, and with 23 seconds left, Illinois is still in this game. They're getting the throw out there, which was extremely important because they have no timeouts remaining. Oh no, he's going to get tackled in bounds. And this six point deficit is probably too hard to overcome, but here's the final play of the game and it goes nowhere. Oklahoma State gives the Big Ten their second loss, so they only have one life remaining. They're literally on the verge of being the next conference put out and the Big 12 is starting to look more powerful than ever. They've won both of the games they've played in. They still have all three of their lives left and now the wheel is landing on them, so they're going to have to play again. And you just got to feel bad for the Sun Belt's terrible spawn point. They're trapped between three huge 
East conferences, and Cincinnati will be representing the Big 12, while on the other side of things, they're going to be taking on Arkansas State. Well, I am all for close games, and surprisingly, that is what we have here, as it is only one possession with a minute and a half left, and I don't know why they're going and spiking the ball right now. There's still plenty of time left, and they just wasted a down, which was really dumb, because now it's fourth and two, and they have to pick this up. They go with the quarterback run. He slides, and Arkansas State is still alive. Also, I don't think I've mentioned it yet. This is a J.J. McCarthy jersey. That's from Michigan winning imperialism. It took forever to come in, but I said I'd get the jersey for the team that won, so I had to actually show you all that. While I was talking about that, it seems like Arkansas State just wanted to lose this game. It's fourth and 17. They are not going to pick up the first, and the Big 12 gets another win. I feel like it's safe to say they're probably the favorites right now, but obviously we still have a long way to go. There are only three conferences that still have all three of their lives, and the FCS schools are not one of those three. Once again, the Big 12 is going to be playing, and that's the disadvantage of winning games and expanding your territory. I'm not sure it matters who this lands on. They're going to be taking on Drake, and I think we know how this is going to go. Well, leave it up to Kansas to be in a close game with an FCS school. They're probably going to hold on, but can you imagine if they choked the Big 12's first life with a loss here? That would be madness, and I'm all here for it, but on 4th and 5, they're going to actually get it. So the upset hopes are still alive, but they need to go all the way down the field. And considering it's taken them a whole minute to go 10 yards, I'm not sure I see that happening, but the offensive line is doing great here. There was enough time to throw it up and that's going to be a huge play. Hold on, there is a flag though. And that's some home cooking for sure. They did not want to see the Jayhawks fall. Now Drake isn't in a great position and that interception is going to seal it. That penalty really ended up costing the Bulldogs and also the FCS schools as a whole because they're down to one life. And I I think it's safe to say that they're in some trouble. We'll see how much longer they end up making it. For now, we have the SEC taking the field again, and I'm pretty sure they're still surrounded by conferences much smaller in them, which was kind of true, but this spin's going to force them to play against the ACC. Talk about a big game. One of these conferences will only have one life left after this, and I can only imagine the other SEC schools are not happy Arkansas is representing them again. They're going to have to play at Florida State, and with less than a minute remaining, it looks like the ACC is going to survive, but Arkansas does have a chance. They just need to somehow get eight points. They do have the ball. And with no timeouts, they're going to have to be moving quickly. KJ Jefferson's just taking his check downs. And now there's only 26 seconds remaining. It is fourth and four. He takes another check down. But that was actually important for him to do because they needed to make sure that they stopped the clock, got the first down. He's getting out of bounds here. And the Razorbacks are getting to a spot where they could potentially go for the Hail Mary. That's another big gain. And here we go with the SEC's second life on the line. It's thrown up. And that was very anticlimactic. Arkansas is single-handed handedly fumbling it for the favorites, and the ACC's territory is starting to look a little funky. For not being that big, it touches six different conferences, and that's just going to make it harder for them to win it in the end. Now, it looks like this could be the end of the FCS school's run, as they are headed down to play the Big 12 again, so I'd say if they want a chance, they need this to land on North Dakota State, but it doesn't, and I would not have much faith in Southern Illinois against Kansas State. Well, the score ended up being what we expected, but the crazy part is Kansas State was trailing at the half. Since that moment though they've scored 34 straight and it's sad to see but the conference of fcs schools has fallen making them the second group to be knocked out of this imperialism the big 12 just continues to expand but surely someone stops them soon now this should be interesting we haven't seen the pac-12 play yet and with how the map's set up they can pretty much only play the mountain west their advantage is that usc and ucla haven't left for the big 10 yet though and just based off of their geography i think they could win it all now boise state needs to defend well here and i'm honestly surprised that they have a lead. It is fourth and inches for Utah. They have to pick this up and they're going to get it. So I'm sure this is about to be an electrifying ending. Cam Rising steps back and throws it out of bounds, but they still have a few more downs to try and get in here and that's going to be it. That means Boise State is going to control their destiny, but they're going to have to move down the field decently quick. They do have all three timeouts. Their quarterback seems to be a runner. He's taken off here for a solid 12 yards and all they need to do to win is get in field goal range. So that is not out of the realms of possibilities, but now it is because he took a bad sack and for whatever for weird reason, they wound the clock all the way down before just losing here. The Pac-12 keeps all three of their lives, and the Mountain West Conference is down to just one. I have a feeling they're not going to be around for too much longer, and we'll see how much farther they end up actually making it. The Mac still has two lives, so they shouldn't be in panic mode yet, but they cannot be happy about getting matched up against the Big 12. We'll have to see if they can pull off a nice upset. It's going to be Ohio, and they're going to have to go in and win at BYU. That actually does seem like it could happen, and 
and look at the backdrop on the stadium. It's definitely a beautiful one. While this game was not as BYU wanted to represent their new conference the right way, getting them a 25 point win over the Bobcats. I honestly thought it was going to be closer, but now the Mac is on the verge of elimination and who knows how much longer they're going to end up making it. I think the ACC is two lives still, so they should be okay here, but they're going to have to play against the independent schools again. And this time they'll be on the road. So who knows what will happen? Miami is representing them going into this game against Army and the ACC got the exact matchup they were hoping for. However, with a minute and four seconds remaining, the Hurricanes are actually losing to Army. Now they do have the ball, but they're trailing by four, so they have to go all the way down the field, score a touchdown to win, and I cannot believe they are in this position. This should have been cake for them. They are going to almost throw an interception, so Tyler Van Dyke really needs to focus up because it is third and ten, and they're only going to get a few yards. It all comes down to this. Fourth and two. He steps back, and he delivers a dot. Well, after another big play, they are down to about the seven, and they're going to get down to the three or four here, but the clock is ticking, and they need to hike the ball. Second and goal. Tyler Van Dyke takes it to the running back, and they're not going to stop him. Army is going to give up the last second touchdown and lose to Miami. They literally had them, but instead, they're going to lose a life for the independents, and I cannot believe they fumbled that away at the very end. If you want to see actual upsets though, they've been happening for weeks in college basketball, and with the madness coming closer to the end, there's a good chance your teams have already been put out of the tournament like mine have, or maybe they didn't even make it in the first place. Either way, if you want to make watching the final college basketball games even more entertaining, now's the time to get prize picks today's video sponsor. You simply pick two to six players and higher or lower on their projections, and if you're right like I I was with this one, you can win up to 25 times the money. I also have a promo code that will double your initial deposit up to $100 when you sign up on prize picks, so make sure to take advantage of that by using code board or the first link in my description. They have pretty much any sport you can think of, and it's available to play in over 30 states. Remember boys, when you use code board, play responsibly, and let's get back to conference imperialism. So at this point, we are halfway through the entire thing, and the Big 12 and the Pac-12 are the only conferences that haven't lost a life yet. Speaking of the Pac-12, they're going to be headed to the Northwest, and that literally just ended up matching up the two conferences I was talking about. That ends up making this game probably the most important one yet, and Arizona will be representing the Pac-12 while UCF will be representing the Big 12. Neither of these teams are the best thing their respective conferences have to offer, but surprisingly, the Wildcats have come out and held UCF to zero points. I can't believe they played that terribly, but that's going to be the first L their conference takes, and now the Pac-12 is going to take a third of their land which I think is going to slightly give them the most territory in the U.S. Now, we all know that's probably subject to change, and you really don't want that much territory, but they're up to play again, and this time, they're going in the same direction. That's going to pin them against the Big Ten, and since they only have one life left, the Pac-12 is going for max chaos. They have Oregon representing them, so they're going to be well taken care of, and they're going to have to play against Michigan. The entire Big Ten is in the hands of the Wolverines, and this is probably the only time that Ohio State fans are rooting for Michigan, because with a minute and a half left, they have a lead and all they need to do is stop Bo Nix one more time, but he's slinging it deep and it's not going to be intercepted, but that could have very well been the end of the game. Third and 10 now though, he's stepping back in the pocket. He takes his check down and it all comes down to this seven yard stand between Oregon and a first down and they're going to get it. They're not out of it yet and the Big Ten could still be eliminated if this goes to overtime. Those short check downs aren't going to work forever though and Bo Nix is finally going to sling it deep. He has a receiver. He's going to go into the end zone and all of a sudden the ball's going to be in the hands of JJ McCarthy. I'm wearing his jersey. We'll see what he can do with 28 seconds left. He's going to get a nice seven here and all Michigan needs is a field goal so it's not out of the realm of possibility but they're going to have to start picking up more yards than that. It is third and 10 now. They're only going to get five here and we're going to overtime. On their first drive, it looks like the Wolverines are stuck on a third and 10. This halfback screen's going to get out though and he's going to get stopped short. So all Bo Nix needs to do is score a touchdown to knock him out. And that's what he's going to do. I didn't even mean to skip it, but I pressed one button and it was done. It won't let me watch the highlight of it, but it says it was a 25 yard pass to see Coda and the Big Ten is our first major conference to be finished. I can't lie. I did not see that coming when I sat down and started filming this video, but one of the their best teams represented them in the end and they still couldn't win. The ACC is in an interesting spot here. I think they still have two lives left. And of course, it's going to be them versus the independents again. They're one and one versus each other as of right now, but it always comes down to who this wheel lands on and it's going to be Notre Dame. I don't see Virginia Tech winning this one. And since it took until the fourth quarter for them to score, which they're now doing with ease, they're going to fall to the Irish and the ACC 
is going to be down to just one life. The pressure is definitely going to be on them in upcoming matchups, and the independents are taking over the east coast. With 15 lives or games remaining, this is what the map looks like, and there are four conferences left that are just one game away from being eliminated. The SEC is one of those, so this wheel spin is incredibly important, and they're going to have to face off against the American. Can you imagine if this wheel landed on Vanderbilt? It almost did, but instead it landed on Alabama, which is the team they wanted to represent them, and in all honesty, Temple never stood a chance in this game. That means the American is also down to just one life now, and I'm not sure how much longer they're going to make it. Every conference is probably hoping the wheel does not land on them at this point, but the Pac-12 keeps on getting called up to do some damage, and this might be the end of the Mountain West Conference. They were in a really tough spot from the start of the video, but I feel like if they were going to draw anyone, they should be happy with Arizona State, though Air Force is playing, and I don't know how good they really are. Well, with 42 seconds left, the Falcons are actually in it. They've been running this entire time, and it's put them in a 4th and 4 situation on a drive that's already taken a few minutes. The halfback screen isn't going to work, and Arizona State's going to knock out the Mountain West. They've become the 4th one to get eliminated, and it is currently a sea of blue out in the West. Nobody has been able to give the Pac-12 a single loss yet, and the Max entire run could be on the line here. They're going to get to take on the independent schools, and honestly, this spin does not mean much compared to the next one. It pretty much has to land on Army for them to have a chance, and they definitely got lucky there. Normally, I don't jump into games this early, but I just want to note the score. And here with a minute and a half remaining, it is 7-3. to three. It has definitely been a defensive battle, and this time Army is not going to get the first, so it all comes down to one play, and we'll see if Miami's defense is able to hold on strong one more time, which they are going to do. So the MAC conference is going to live to see another day. That probably made their territory way bigger than they wanted it to, because now they're exposed from multiple different fronts. I feel like we've seen so much Pac-12 recently, but they've still yet to lose a life, and every team has held their own so far. This time it's going to be Colorado, so you'd assume this would give the Big 12 a chance to get some revenge. This is the second time that BYU has hosted one, and with a minute and a half remaining, they have a four-point lead on the Buffaloes. They really should have held onto that interception there and sealed the deal, but instead, they're going to have to keep getting stops, and so far, they've done a fantastic job of doing so. They're going to get a sack here, so the Pac-12 might actually lose lose a life, and they're going to go with a run. Why would they do that? Who calls a handoff on 4th and 18? Evidently, they just wanted to lose, and that's going to make the Pac-12 a lot less dominant. They had to give up a third of their land, and this just goes to show that you do not want to have a big territory. The independent schools only have one life left, so this could be huge, and it's going to be them versus the Mac. Now, the most important spin will be who is representing them, and it is going to be Notre Dame. I'm sorry for any of those that might root for a Mac school, but I don't think it matters who this lands on, because they are going to need a miracle. You know, if the Ball State offense actually played a little bit better, they might have had a chance. The defense has held the Irish to 23 points, and that's really not that much, especially because it's been able to keep it a close game, and they're going to get in here. Could the comeback potentially be on? It's 3rd and 13, they're not going to get it, and now Ball State is going to get the ball back again. However, they are stuck on a fourth and one here and the option is not going to work. So in the end, Notre Dame is going to knock out the Mac and that's going to leave us with just 10 total lives remaining. I believe anybody could come out on top at this point and these seven conferences all have a decent chance. The ACC is up now and since they're on their last life, this spin is massive. They're going to just barely get the independent schools and only one of these conferences are going to be able to survive this game. The ACC's wheel landing on Clemson there was massive and this one's going to barely be Army. So I think the independence run is going to come to an end. Well, all I can say is I have no clue how this is still close. Sometimes Army plays really well, sometimes they don't. They're running for some reason, and they hate the pass, but they have to do it here on 4th and 9. Their quarterback won't get the throw out, and I'm not sure how Clemson let that be a contest. Another game and another conference has now fallen, but we can all applaud the independent schools for their efforts. There are now just six conferences remaining, and the Pac-12 is playing again. I feel like they've played the most games of any so far, but it's going to continue to be them versus the Big 12, and after this game, one of these conferences is only going to have one life left. USC was a great landing spot for the Pac-12, but we're going to get Texas versus them, and this seems like a pretty even matchup. Well, I take that back. USC always had a 2-3 to three possession lead throughout this entire game, and now with one more loss, the Big 12 could be eliminated. They have gained and lost so much land throughout this entire thing, and I feel like we are on the verge of someone being eliminated. The ACC is up, and I'm pretty sure they're touching 
touching all remaining conferences, so this could go anywhere, and it looks like they're headed for the American. Depending on who this lands on, this could end up being a pretty even matchup, but with elimination on the line, you probably don't want Georgia Tech representing your conference, and I think Tulane's gonna knock out the ACC here. Well, with 67 seconds left, the Green Wave are actually losing, and if Georgia Tech can end up pulling this one off, I will be very impressed. I thought going into this game, the ACC was done, but Georgia Tech's changed my mind because they've really stepped up, and here on 4th and 23, with everything on the line, the throw is going to go for the first down. Somehow, Tulane is not out of it, and on this play, they're going to sling it again, and it's going to be an overthrow. Their odds are not great, but they are in it now that they picked that up, and that should have been a pick, and they're going straight up to the huddle in hurry-up mode. This is a deep throw, and it's going to be intercepted. Georgia Tech finally locks up on defense, and the American Conference is going to be done. I'd definitely say they had one of the unluckier starting spots, though. So for a conference that just lost a lot of their best schools, they did all right. When you look at the wheel, the only real surprise is the Sun Belt instead of the Big Ten, but they haven't been landed on in a long time, and they're not going to have to play in this one. I'd say the closest conference to that arrow is the ACC, so there's no way out of it now. We are about to lose a major conference. And the Pac-12 has a great team representing them taking on Virginia. I thought the ACC was going to be done on their last turn, but they survived that. And with a minute remaining, somehow the Cavaliers are not out of it. I thought Utah was going to maul them, but instead, they're in the game. And if they can somehow find the end zone on this drive, they'd actually end up winning the ACC on the line. They're slinging it deep, and it's not going to be intercepted, but that should have been game right there. Their quarterback gets the ball out in time, and that was huge that they got out of bounds right there. They're down to about the 45, but he's going to take a sack, and that's going to run off so much clock. At least no matter what, they're probably in range for a Hail Mary. They're not going to get the first down here, so it all comes down to this. On fourth and four, it's a missed throw. That was not how I expected this game to end, but the Pac-12 stays alive, the ACC is eliminated, and the United States is very blue. For some reason, I thought the Pac-12 only had one life left, but they still have two along with the Sun Belt, and we have not seen the SEC play in a long time. Of course, there was really nowhere else for them to go, and they need to have a good team representing them. It's going to be my team, Kentucky, and with the entire conference on the line, I do not trust my Wildcats, but we're playing Arizona State, so at least this is a winnable game. With a minute and a half left, Kentucky is trailing by four, and if Will Levis would ever hike the ball, we'd have a decent chance of going down the field and winning but he took the entire clock with him. And now it's fourth and four, so things are not looking good. Why did we run it? And that's literally gonna be it for the SEC. The only slimmer hope is stopping Arizona State and using all the timeouts, which I guess is a real possibility now that on third and seven, they're not gonna run it. Their quarterback gets out of the pocket, and he throws it across the field. Why was there no pressure in there? That was enough to actually finish off the favorites, the SEC. And this map is starting to look a bit ridiculous. It has really all come down to three final conferences. And I'm pretty sure no matter what direction this goes, it can only go to the Big 12. There was no chance for that to touch the Sun Belt. So once again, the Pac-12 is going to be taking the field. And you really don't want Washington State representing you in a game against TCU. The Big 12 could be put out if they lose here. But it looks like TCU is not going to let that happen once. Washington State needs to pick up this first down on fourth and six. They're not going to get it. And this result changes everything. Now the Pac-12 only has one life remaining, but the Sun Belt still has two. And the Big 12 now has over half of the United States. This has been a different concept, but I have definitely enjoyed doing it. And now the Sun Belt is competing for the first time in a while. Obviously, they can only touch the Big 12's territory. And can you imagine the scenes if they were able to put them out here? South Alabama is not a bad team, and they're going to be playing against Kansas, so I think this one could really go either way. With a few minutes left in the third quarter, it looks like the Jaguars are going for their first touchdown. Their quarterback breaks a sack, but that throw was not on point, and I don't know why they're not just running it in here, because they are literally on the one-yard line, but there it is. They're finally on the board, and with two minutes left, it is fourth and five. They are trailing Kansas by seven now. Their quarterback finds the open receiver. They're going to pick up the first down, which is going to get them to the 24, and we could be setting up for a really good ending here. All they have to do is get into the end zone one final time, but that is going to be some great defense. So it is third and 11, and their quarterback's going to get them five yards here, but it's not enough. So again, on fourth and five, they're going to sling it deep, and the receiver cannot hold on to it. How did he drop that? He literally had the ball in his hands, and all he had to do was hold on to it. But look at this run. Oh my gosh, 
Jalen Daniels is breaking free. That's pretty much just going to ice the game for Kansas. And the Big 12 is going to live to see another day. Every conference has just one life remaining now. And the poor Sunbelt Conference is so tiny. Whoever doesn't play in this matchup will automatically make the championship. And the Sunbelt has had back-to-back -back bad luck. Again, they are surrounded. So they are going to have to play against the Big 12 again with Georgia State. And I don't know how good they are, but they're going to be taking on West Virginia. The Pac-12 has automatically made the championship and these two teams are competing for the other spot. So far, it seems like Georgia State has put up a good fight, and they're looking to tie it back up on this drive. It's just the start of the fourth quarter. Their quarterback finds a receiver, and Darren Granger has done a good job so far. He's handing the ball off here to the running back who gets four, and now they're coming out in Wildcat, which they've done numerous times today because it has worked. It is third and goal, though, and this could be the play of the game depending on what happens. Their quarterback should have just taken off. Why'd he stop running? I don't know what he was thinking there. Instead, they ended up having to take their three points. And with three and a half minutes remaining, it is fourth and one. West Virginia is going for it and they're going to pick it up. The longer it takes them to stop them, the less of a chance they're going to have at winning. And West Virginia has managed this clock so perfectly so far. Getting into the end zone here would pretty much ice the game though. And JT Daniels is going to fall in. So this one is pretty much going to be over for the Sun Belt. They had a good run, but on fourth and 15, it could all come to an end here. They went with a halfback screen and they're not going to get anywhere. The championship is not going to have the Sun Belt Conference in it, but now it's time to see which is the best football conference. It's going to be played at a neutral site, so the only wheels I'm going to spin are the team wheels, and representing the Big 12 will be Texas, while the team representing the Pac-12 will be UCLA. It all comes down to this. And the funniest part is that in a year or two, neither of these teams will be in the conferences that they're representing today. It does seem like the Longhorns are going to be the first team to get into the end zone as they do it here. And isn't it weird that the SEC or the Big Ten didn't end up making it to the championship? Because they were definitely the favorites coming into this thing. For your old sake of entertainment and time, I've advanced to the fourth quarter because the Bruins have done nothing and it's just been very hard to watch their offense. DTR on third and six is going to find the halfback, but he's going to drop it. And that's pretty much going to tell the story of the game. Texas hasn't even played amazing. They've only scored 20, but it's been more than enough to get the job done as they still have the two possession lead. This would probably be the final chance for UCLA to get back into it. And they have all three timeouts. So if they can score quickly, I would definitely say they have a good chance. And all of a sudden, now they want to actually move the ball. We'll see if DTR can continue to do so though. He's taken back-to-back -back sacks and that is going to hurt as now it's third and two. They're running the ball for some reason. And it it looks like it's pretty much all going to be over. I can't believe it. That's going to be a decent throw. It's going to be intercepted though. And the Big 12 is going to end up winning it all because of Texas. Here's one last look at the United States and let me know in the comments what you all thought about this style of college football imperialism.